Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Oh my. <laughs> All right, so definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. My little angle symbol. So diagram, if I draw my rectangle, it's going to be a quadrilateral with four right angles. Kind of sloppy, but you see what I'm going there. All right, uh, rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So rhombuses look like this. Oops, you know what? It doesn't quite look right. Let me try that again. I want to make sure that all the sides look the same length here. All right, so there is a quadrilateral, so four sides all the same length. And a square is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides and four right angles. So it's kind of like if you take a rectangle and a rhombus and you add them together, we get a square. So we've got four congruent sides, there's our rhombus, and four right angles like our rectangle made into a square. All right, so Venn diagram. If we think about the larger picture of things, we have quadrilaterals, so all four-sided figures. Inside of our quadrilaterals, we have parallelograms. So all parallelograms are quadrilaterals, but not all quadrilaterals are parallelograms. All right, and within parallelograms, we have rectangles. All rectangles are parallelograms. And we have rhombuses. And the intersection of our rectangle and rhombus is where we find our square. So a nice little visual representation of the relationship between all of these types of figures. All right, so now we've got a nice little place to put all of our properties here. Uh, so review a little bit. Again, we've got properties of a parallelogram. And if you want to see a more in-depth lesson on properties of a parallelogram, you can go back a couple of my videos. All right, so the first one is that opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Um, let's see, opposite sides are parallel, so there's our definition. Diagonals bisect each other, and consecutive angles are supplementary. So we've got all of our properties. Remember, this one is actually the definition of our parallelogram. All the rest are just properties. All right, so then we have um, the definition of a rectangle was that we have four right angles, but we also have other things. So here's my four right angles for a rectangle, but we have another property, which is that the diagonals are congruent. So it's not only that they bisect each other because rectangles are parallelograms, but if it's a rectangle, the diagonals are also going to be congruent. All right, so rhombuses, again, our definition tells us that we have four congruent sides, but we actually have two other properties of a rhombus that we can talk about here. So here, um, geez, we have that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other in a rhombus. And we know that the diagonals, I'm just going to abbreviate here, diagonals bisect opposite angles. So in a rhombus, we have those other two properties. And you know, this is a lot of information about these shapes, so it's going to take a little bit of practice, maybe some flashcards or something to really get used to these properties. All right, and a square, again, we have four right angles. We have four congruent sides, so there's our definition of a square. And then because squares are rectangles, they are rhombuses, and they are parallelograms, really all of the above properties apply to squares. So kind of 
trickles down our map there. All right, so let's look at applying some of these properties and setting up equations to find variables. We're not going to find the variables, but we can use our geometry and see how these equations get set up. All right, so for A, we have a rhombus. So if it tells us we have a rhombus, and we're given information about two angles here in the corner, and notice there's a diagonal going through those, go back up to your rhombus properties and read what happens. So if you notice, that third property says that the di diagonals bisect those opposite angles. So here, this angle is bisected, so I can set these two angles equal to each other because we know it's a rhombus. If we weren't given the information it was a rhombus, we wouldn't have been able to do that. All right, our next example is going to be a rectangle. And if we look back, now this one's a little tricky. If we look back up at our properties of a rectangle, we know that there's four right angles, but we also know that diagonals are congruent. And because it's a pro uh, parallelogram, the diagonals are also bisected. So we know that all of these pieces have to be congruent to each other because it's a rectangle. Now, if we look at that triangle, those two angles are base angles of an isosceles triangle that we've just created, which means they have to be congruent because we have now an isosceles triangle. So it was a little trickier than our last example, but there we go. We can set up our equation using our diagonal property of a rectangle and our properties of isosceles triangles. All right, and then the last one here is a rhombus. We're going to combine a couple properties of our rhombus. Uh, we know that diagonals are congruent, in a, or sorry, uh, perpendicular. Diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus. So here we have 90 degree angles, and we know that the diagonals bisect opposite angles. So this angle here also is 2x plus 10 because it has to be bisected. Those two angles there have to be congruent. Now, if you've noticed, I've made myself a little right triangle, which means 2x plus 10 and 3x plus 5 have to add up to 90 degrees in order for that triangle to make 180 degrees total. So we've seen a few of the properties. I know there's lots more, so have fun practicing. And uh, that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.